This is Tokyo, Japan. It is the most populous city in the world, with over 37 million residents. This is Red Rock in Ontario, Canada, population under 900. No matter where you live on this wondrous planet, the amount of history in every meter of forest, desert, or ocean is unfathomable. If these walls could talk, if these lands could utter but a single story of what they've seen, we'd have tales to tell for generations to come. Join us as we embark upon a most ambitious project, the tale of world history, a past which we must truly understand before setting our gaze to the future. We will go back to World War I, the French Revolution, the African Kingdoms, the Far East, ancient Greece and Rome, with lots of other stops along the way. But for now, our story begins here. The Earth 85 million years ago We believe this is when primates diverged from the rest of their mammalian ancestors, forming the family hominidae, or hominids. This is when we begin to see apes and orangutans. The subfamily hominini includes all of these except orangutans. About 8.5 million years ago, the hominini would diverge from the gorillini, which went on to become gorillas. 7.5 million years ago, early humans and chimpanzees, under the hominini branch, would diverge from each other. Humans, as we know them today, evolved in different stages. The Auron, Sahelanthropus, and Ardipithecus were the first stages up to 7 million years ago. Australopithecus would appear just 4 million years back. Some consider the Paranthropus, appearing 2.7 million years ago, the same genus. 1.8 million years ago would see the emergence of the genus Homo. One of the earliest species in this period was Homo habilis. Their brains were about as small as a chimpanzee's, but they would begin using crude stone tools. Homo ergaster and the famous Homo erectus emerged later and possessed larger brain sizes compared to Homo habilis. They would create better tools and learn how to tame fire. Homo heidelbergensis appeared around 800,000 years ago, and Homo sapiens, our very own species, about 150 to 200,000 years back. Homo neanderthalensis, or Neanderthal, diverged around 600 to 700,000 years ago, from a common ancestor in Homo. Once Homo sapiens emerged, they would interbreed with Neanderthal. Though they had bigger brains, and a more sturdy physique than Homo sapiens, they would eventually become extinct, due to their lack of social cooperation. Archaeology can help us discover the what, and when. But the whys and hows are often quite difficult when dealing with these far-gone time periods. One theory of a driver of early human evolution is the aridity hypothesis. This states that changes to more arid climate and an expansion of the savanna caused early humans to have to adapt. The savanna hypothesis posits that this expansion of the savanna caused early humans to leave the treetops and become bipedal on the grasslands. So what did leaving the treetops do for our ancestors? Walking upright on the savanna helped in various ways, from being able to see further distances, traveling further while expending less energy, and most importantly, freed up their hands in order to use tools and weapons. There were physical consequences to this as well. Skeletal changes would occur in the legs and back. Changes in the pelvis caused childbirth to become more burdensome than in most other animals. Gestation periods would also shorten significantly to allow a baby to pass through the birth canal before its head grew too large. This is also partly the reason why human babies are more helpless and need more time to develop than other mammalian species. From around 3.3 million years ago, when our ancestors first began using stone tools, until around 12,000 years ago, the Paleolithic Era, or Old Stone Age, encompasses 99% of our technological prehistory. Early humans lived in small tribal societies, hunting and foraging for food, and beginning to use fire to cook and see in the dark. Members of the genus Homo would evolve during this period, leading to Homo sapiens. 
Around the Middle Paleolithic, from around 300,000 years ago, we start to see primitive works of art and spiritual practices involving the dead. As they were primarily nomadic, humans would travel from place to place, looking for new food sources. This eventually, over thousands of years, brought us all over the world, according to the Out of Africa theory. Around 12,000 years ago though, there would be a shift in human society, a shift that changed everything. The Neolithic Revolution, also called the Agricultural Revolution, saw humans begin to domesticate plants and animals, and would transition from their nomadic lifestyles into ones more sedentary. There are numerous theories about how this occurred as well, such as the hilly flanks hypothesis, which states that agriculture began in the hilly flanks of the Taurus and Zagros mountains. Other theories claim that agriculture was developed to create surpluses of food, in order to display power or dominance. The Neolithic Revolution had deep effects on human society. The somewhat egalitarian groupings of the past, were replaced by a social hierarchy. The surplus of food made possible by agriculture, led to more population. Not everyone was needed to produce this food, so many became full-time soldiers, craftsmen, and administrators. Priests and other spiritual leaders were often near the top of the hierarchy. Physical health suffered as well. Less activity was bad on its own, but close proximity to animals caused pathogens to jump from species to species, leading to widespread diseases. Neolithic humans were also plagued by vitamin deficiencies, and poorer dental growth. This agricultural revolution, is the basis for sedentary society, population growth, division of labor, and social stratification, all of which are still visible in our current society.